so uh, uh, we can start just all over again huh? okay well, two minutes two minutes yeah. uh, the uh, it's go ahead uh, you know no uh, uh, hold on uh, still uh, it shows uh, live captain okay yes. yeah right. uh, am i good I to go yeah good to go okay so as we were saying that there is an strong correlation between the oral health to the general health well being and general health and the same goes for the general health like if you want to be really healthy you need to take good care of your mouth like you cannot expect to be super healthy and have like five decays and two shaky teeth and bleeding gums no you cannot so there will there is something when there is something like that there is something wrong in the system then you need to fix that first before you go into getting into the the nuance of 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 a very good health so i was talking about the silver fillings so i was think i was asking everyone is anyone has a silver filling in the mouth does anyone has a silver filling in the mouth none of the participants it's very good because if you don't have a silver filling in your mouth the silver filling contains this is just a one of the things that is there which i'm talking about has 50% of it is mercury so and over the period of time when you grind on to that tooth there is constant release of mercury from that tooth so there is a very nice research done in university of calgary it was called a smoking tooth where there is in where, where they have demonstrated uh, in a lab setting where there is there is a constant release of mercury from the tooth and that mercury causes cause systemic disorders there is a group of disorder caused by mercury it's called as anodynia it can cause anything from joint aches to dementia like the the, the scale is pretty vast and the other thing that i, I want to stress upon is uh, oral health is seen as something that is in your in your mouth which, which is not connected to your body it's not like that everything that is there in the mouth is connected to your body yeah and especially during this time of pandemic we can we go to the next slide yeah so people are staying indoors and uh, and we are encouraged to stay indoors the only thing that we uh, we are told all over in in the tv or in the newspaper or anywhere else is to stay home and stay safe i don't completely agree to it because the more you stay at home the more you uh, breathing in the same air the more you are staying away from the sun the more you are inactive and the other thing is which which is which is which will goes very close to this is uh, the stress and the constant fear when you turn on the tv uh, they'll be talking about there is a third wave of pandemic that is coming there is a delta wave that is coming uh, you need to be in, you need to be very careful about it you need to be you need to stress on how to wear a mask and how to take care of uh, your um, hygiene you have to wash your hands properly and things like that no one talks about the systemic health your metabolic health is your biggest friend it's not your biggest enemy and there is a strong correlation of the biofilm that is a bacterial film on your hands to your general well being to your immunity people are using sanitizers right left and center people can i have seen people those who will sanitize their hands while sitting in the car they'll sanitize their hand while stepping out they'll sanitize their hand while going into the bedroom also but sanitizers are basically or alcohol based there there are two things that a sanitizer does one is it destroys the biofilm it let only a very resilient bacteria to thrive on your skin the other thing it does is it dries your skin out and it it precipitates the surface protein making it more vulnerable to infection so if in the middle of the pandemic so what you need to do is you need to go out in the sun you need to exercise more and stop ordering food from online and just don't indulge into into food you just try and do exercise and mo the most important thing is take care of oral, oral hygiene like if you have a cavity if you have bleeding gums if you have a shaky tooth if you feel that there is uh, the, the bad breath that is coming go see a dentist it's completely safe don't worry about it it's not going to nothing's going to happen yeah 
can we go to the next yeah so as i already told you there is a very strong correlation between the general health and the oral health so if someone is diabetic and he is staying there in how in the in their house and not getting uh, the regular oral prophylaxis or the regular scaling done it puts them in at risk of more of glucose intolerance there's a research which was been done by stuner uh, stiner at at l and lu so in 2006 so they said that the sixth complication of diabetes is periodontitis periodontitis is what in layman terms it's shaky tooth when the teeth become shaky they become long it's that so if someone is diabetic they should go to a dentist and get this uh, scaling done that goes the other way also if someone has a loose teeth that need to be fixed because that can also cause glucose intolerance and there are other issues uh, in 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 the mouth that need to be addressed we'll get to that also in the next slide yeah so what happens in your mouth doesn't stay in your mouth so if you have food lodgement in your mouth there is food that is lodged into between the teeth which is getting decayed there is bacteria that is growing into the mouth that those bacteria doesn't just stay in the mouth they go into your system so the junction between the tooth and the gums it's called as a sulcus so that's from where uh, the toxins can leach out into your system our gut starts with our lips so if you see there is an the border of the lips it's called as a vermilion border so if you if you see it in 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 a holistic way our lips is from where the external we we communicate with their external environment so this part of the lip is called as a mucosa so it has certain glands which uh, produces uh, certain secretions which which um, helps in maintaining immunity and it uh, forms certain kind of a defense and when we say about gut health oral health is an very integral part of it oral health is from where the gut starts so so as i said whatever happens in your mouth doesn't stay in the mouth it goes all over so the first connection of any bacteria so when we talk about gut health and when we say immunity what do you understand by that it means that our body whenever there is a new bacteria there, there is a, new, a, a, a kind of an immune response that is evoked in our body so where it starts first it starts in the oral environment it starts in the mouth so in the mouth the body knows and identifies the bacteria okay it says okay this is a good bacteria it's a probiotic it's not a pathogen so it's good it's it can it can stay in the system because you see 99% of the bacteria are not pathogenic only 1% is in fact if you ask me it's less than 1% rest of 99% of the bacteria are either they are uh, they are neutral they they don't cause any kind of harm and most of them are in fact probiotics they actually help us in maintaining our immunity and they help us with the defense the first line of defense in a body if you if if you ask someone they'll say okay this is the first line of defense is our immune cells no it's not the first line of defense is the biofilm the biofilm is what it's a smear layer which is formed by our epithelial cells and the bacteria on it so when you wash your hand constantly or if you use a mouthwash which has which has alcohol or which has a very strong disinfectant like triclosan you wash away all those bacteria so you need those bacteria for proper functioning so mouth is the part where there is a first interaction of the bacteria that happens and uh, when i say the interaction that there are certain bacteria which 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 uh, will form which which will form a biofilm and which will form a defense against the other pathogenic bacteria so we can go to the next slide dr singh you mentioned Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 doctor, you have been. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times the particular word biofilm. Uh, yeah. Uh, what does it in a plain language would mean? In layman terms, there there is there are trillions of bacteria on our skin. There are sixty times more of bacteria bacterial cells on our body than our own somatic cells. Hmm. So when I talk about biofilm, it's a film of bacteria and our dead skin cells. which are formed on our skin 
or in a, in our oral environment in, in even in our mouth so biofilm is uh, is a complex of bacteria and human cells which are formed which forms a defense and that in in terms of skin it has a uh, skin epithelial cell bacteria and the oil which is uh, secreted from our sebaceous gland and in the mouth it is bacteria it is uh, um, it's epithelial cells it's cervical fluid and it's the saliva it's it's so saliva it's little, yeah it's little different in the mouth and it's different in the in, in the skin yeah can you go and to the next you, you mentioned uh, you mentioned mouthwash so that is actually more harmful for the bacteria in our mouth than actually helping us because people yeah, think yeah. that they are yeah. oh they are going to rinse their mouth they use a mouthwash and they think it's going to help reduce the uh, mouth odor when actually the cause of that odor in your mouth could be something else it's something else yeah so first of all mouth odor uh, i'll get to it also so 85% of the times it's from the dental and the oral origin but 15% of the time it can be a respiratory issue or your gastrointestinal issues someone who who's having a gid gastroesophageal reflux syndrome yeah so they will have a bad breath someone who has an upper respiratory tract or even lower respiratory tract will have a bad breath someone who has a sinusitis might have a bad, bad breath so those are from an uh, extra oral origin that they are not from the mouth so what happens if if you use an uh, mouthwash first of all it's not fixing the cause what it is secondly it's just an cosmetic thing so like you will feel better for some time and it's like a perfume after, that, after yeah after that it will go away the third yeah. thing is most of the mouthwashes people don't read the label there yeah. there are people those who use mouthwashes which contains chlorhexidine they contains um, alcohol they contain triclosan so those things are not to be used on a regular basis so they are very case specific for a very sh uh, short period of time and for a certain disorder and uh, condition you cannot just keep using it aap sar dard ki dawa nahi lete hamesha so aap aise nahi bolte ki i'll take a dispirin and i'll never have a headache that's not how you treat headache when you have an headache only then you take a dispirin so if you have a condition and for that if the dentist is giving you a mouthwash that's fine but discontinue it after after that thing is taken care of yeah, yeah so what happens is uh, when we talk about bacteria i have to go a little deep into this because otherwise uh, people will not understand and uh, when we talk about um, gut feeling and gut bacteria uh, there are certain enzymes that are released from the gut bacteria which directly uh, which in directly elevate the mood or depress the mood there are certain bacteria which forms something which is called as arachidonic acid those bacteria are called as c def cell clostridium difficile those bacteria are responsible for yeah c def cell become so they are responsible for either constipation or and most commonly for diarrhea they cause something which is called as pseudomyelitis colitis which is always uh, flies under the radar like and it's very difficult to fix so they they release something which is called as arachidonic acid so arachidonic acid breaks down into prostaglandins so why i am telling you this because prostaglandins goes to the brain and they evokes an inflammatory response in the brain they release uh, epinephrine and adrenaline so you will have more of a fight and flight response so you will be always agitated if you if you have those bacteria in your in your gut so you'll feel anxious you'll not be able to concentrate and uh, and no one will think that this is because of my gut so because i don't have proper bowel movement so that's why i'm feeling like that so people do know it they sometimes connect the dot but most of the time it goes unseen likewise there are certain probiotics which there, like there is there is, there is a uh, species of probiotic which is called as bacteriodetes which releases uh, um, hormones which makes you feel better which which makes you more oriented which gives you more focus those hormones are called as serotonin now serotonin breaks down into dopamine in the brain and it it also increases something which is called as gaba in the brain so what gaba does is it will make you sleep better you will be more relaxed in a situation where you have to be more agitated you will focus really well 
in fact you your breathing will goes down if you have more of gaba in your system like if i if i do your i do a breath test so ideally in in the western world and uh, by western medicine 16 breath a minute is considered to be normal but i find it little high there are there are many studies which say that 16 to 18 breaths are little are normal no but if your breath is little less than that if you are a deep breather it increases your general well being it it fixes everything up you know how important the breath is right you people work on breath a lot yeah so so, so it, yeah it fixes a fixes a lot of lot many things uh, uh, doctor at this point yeah. can i interrupt you yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, when you said gut the what you meant was this intestines am i right yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, yeah. Uh, from the intestine uh, some kind of a fluid goes to the brain right no in the, from the intestine there is there are gates in the intestine and there are bacteria around it so yeah. there is a constant in, interaction of the bacteria in the gut with our uh, bodily fluids yeah there is a fluid which is called as peritoneal fluid So, correct so that fluid yeah. goes to the brain and uh, yeah so that that so the things that are there are nutrients that are absorbed from the fluid and they go into the central nervous system yeah and can go into the circulation and central nervous system yes so what happens uh, uh, i mean to the how does it affect the brain so that's what i'm saying saying that there are bacteria that can make you feel depressed ah, without any reason without any reason good, good. yeah Very yeah, good. yeah and and they'll make you more anxious like in a situation right. where you're not supposed to be anxious your heartbeat will be higher your breath will be you will have a shorter breath and the number of breaths will be more and you will feel unnecessarily stressed out when there will be no issue like an organic issue for it so what and you are saying is ki when there is an infection in the teeth or somewhere the infection yeah. goes down to your intestine and Absolutely. it creates a, some kind of a fluid which has contains bacteria and it yeah. goes to the brain and yeah. this could be the result of anxiety depression and things like this am i right yes yes so in a layman yeah you can uh, you can say like that. it's over simplification but yeah still you can say like that yeah so yes yeah, so it starts with the mouth of course so yeah. there are there is so if you want to know about it there is something i'll tell you something in very brief there is something which is called as bacterial succession so there are different categories of bacteria so there are certain bacteria that breathe oxygen that those are called as aerobic bacteria there are certain bacteria which does not breathe oxygen those are called as anaerobic bacteria there are certain bacteria which are uh, opportunistic which can breathe oxygen and when you when they don't get oxygen then it's also fine those are called as facultative aerobic aerobes facultative anaerobic aerobic bacteria or facultative anaerobes so what happens in in a mouth when you have something like in periodontal pocket when you have an uh, space between the tooth and the gum there is bacterial succession that is happening so the top part of the pocket will have bacteria which are aerobic bacteria and when you go down into the pocket there will be bacteria which will be anaerobic and which will be gram negative those bacteria release lot of endotoxins and they will be so that that can cause real problems like not in the tooth but also in the gut also uh, also in the systemic uh, circulation also yeah can we go to the next slide yeah yes, I, wonderful i mean so far great going <laughs> shobhraj and uh, Thank you. but I, i someone told me sometime back what's in the name you know so uh, <laughs> don't worry about the medical terms you just tell us hota yeah. kya huh? because okay. all of us are laymen over here you know yeah yeah <laughs> so what's in the name it doesn't really matter yeah so no but i have to explain you know how the things go in okay yeah Fine. so so there are certain so when i talk about oral health so how will you know what your oral health is and how good your oral health is mm-hmm. so there are certain things that that are normal in oral health there are certain things which are uh, abnormal so like, like a morning bad breath is normal so if you have a bad breath in the morning it's normal if you if a child of uh, whose uh, teeth are going to fall off it the teeth are shaky it's normal even bleeding gums in an uh, prepubertal child who is uh, who is hitting the puberty which at at the age of 12 to 13 years in uh, or 14 years in guys and 
11, 12, 13 years in female, if they have a bleeding gum, that's also considered pretty much normal because of the hormonal imbalance that they have in the system. But if an adult is having gum bleeding, that is something to be addressed. It is, it's like I, when I ask my patients, yeah, floss karte ho, then they say, we floss, but khun jata usme. there is bleeding in the gums. That is not normal. So bleeding gum shouldn't be, and it's, it is so common, it is so, so common that people consider it almost as a normal phenomenon. So bleeding gums in technical term, it's called as gingivitis. So if you look into the literature, they say that 60% of the people have gingivitis. I tell you in my personal practice, I have seen 90% of the people have it. 90, 90. Everyone has bleeding gums and no one uh, takes it very seriously. Now, when the gums bleed, what happens is the junction between the gums and the tooth has become loose. Now, when we, when uh, I talked about the bacteria and the endotoxin and all that, now those can leach through them. They become leaky. So they must, there is a term that is floating around in the internet. It's called as leaky gut. So this leaky gut starts with the leaky gums. So if you have leaky gums, you will have a leaky gut. So, so, so you get the connection. So if you have a gum bleeding, you will have something which is going wrong, wrong in the system. It starts with the gum. Then it goes further down. The other thing is the loose teeth, loose or shaky teeth. And now there are so many people, those who think that it's uh, it's natural for a person at an uh, at an old age or a geriatric patient to have loose teeth. No, it's not. You are born to uh, you you are designed to have teeth and to die with them. Like you are not designed to have uh, like uh, we are not designed to eat with our gums. So the loose and shaky tooth is there is something really wrong in, in the oral environment that is causing that tooth to shake. So if you have a shaky tooth, go to the dentist, get it checked. If you don't want to get it fixed, get it removed. But don't let that tooth be there because it causes what? When, when you have a shaky tooth, it forms something which is known as positive pump. So when the tooth shakes, it pushes the toxins and the endotoxins into the system rather than pushing it out. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Can so, I interrupt you here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> wonderful. I mean, it's a great knowledge that you are sharing with us. Uh, coming yeah. back to the leaky tooth, I think, yeah. uh, and you mentioned that 90% of the people have leaky tooth and they don't report about it. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, can I ask the audience, uh, uh, let's say you are in your 30s and 40s, well, generally between 30s and 40s it happens correct yeah, no or the, earlier uh, also so, no the gum bleeding can happen in any age so anyone generally. above huh. above adolescence can have gum bleeding like okay. uh, 14 yeah. 15 16 years. okay so uh, anyone yeah. who is uh, experiencing leaky tooth or a gum bleeding can you put it in your chat box uh, yes yes um, those who have leaky gum because it's something as uh, Shobraj has mentioned, it's something very serious, you know. And uh, yeah. But if, if you have a leaky gum, what do we do about it? I mean, when I go to a uh, dentist, what yeah. does he uh, do about it? So, in from a dental perspective... Uh, thank you, Kavya. Yeah. Thank you, Garima. Yes. And I, right, people are coming up, you know, the, honestly sharing, because uh, not yeah. often, but rarely. Jaya, yeah, absolutely right. Who else? Anyone else? Nikki? I remember uh, uh, around when I was 30, 31, I had this. Uh, can I share this something? Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, around 30, 31, I was posted in yeah, Russia. Th those days, USSR. And mm. suddenly I developed while brushing only, I found uh, there used to be a bleeding from my gum. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there was no connection. Those days, no telephone calls, all this. So I wrote a letter to my dad. Okay, look, uh, I have this bleeding here. I showed it to the doctor. And the uh, doctor said, uh, you will have to stop flying. You know, it's uh, something no go. If you are, a, uh, I was a, under helicopter flying training. And he said, uh, uh, if you really want me uh, uh, to take action, then you will have to stop flying. So find a solution for it. It's nothing very serious. 
but as far as the flying is concerned you will be grounded i said my god so i wrote to my dad and he said get hold of uh, sarson ka tel mustard oil okay yeah. so uh, i bought a, a bought small bottle of mustard oil which was again very difficult to get in russia and uh, he says for one week with your finger put a mustard oil and massage your gums with the mustard oil believe me after one week everything stopped and i went to the uh, toothy there uh, a naval doctor dentist there and he says my god but they can't say mehta they say mehta there is no h in the russian language by the way they say mehta it's a wonder what did you do i said no i did just some yoga and pranayam and it got all right i didn't yeah. want to tell him i use mustard oil so i yeah. want to ask you it, uh, does mustard oil have a bearing on this uh, so I, i don't know much about mustard oil but yeah so there are there, if you use something which is oil based like yeah. coconut oil mm-hmm. coconut oil really works in this so oh. coconut oil has something which is called as lauric acid so it's yes. a very potent antibacterial and antifungal also oh. in fact it's it's a very potent antiviral also right so yeah which is very relevant to uh, today's time right uh, yeah yeah absolutely so, it's like if you are from north you will use mustard oil and if yeah. you are a, a, a south indian then coconut yeah. oil is the natural choice but i yes. guess uh, oil is oil oil, oil is oil. <laughs> no so there is there is a difference between seed oil and nut oil and fruit oils so okay. what happens with seed oils is they are high in something which is called as linoleic acid hmm. so i'll get to it but i'll just tell you that fruit oils and nut oils are little better than seed seed oils i'll i'll tell you i'll explain it to you yeah. in, in detail right. yes yeah, so the other thing that you need to take care of is when you see the red flags when you see your oral uh, like your mouth is dull pain and uh, dull and growling pain and if you open your mouth you see there is no cavity nothing you cannot find the cause why you are having that dull pain so it can be one of the two reasons so if you are having morning headaches like you wake up in the morning and you feel very stressed out and your entire back of the head and the sides of your head are aching that means you are doing something which is called as bruxism <laughs> you are grinding your teeth at night and if if you uh, if you are a bruxer the, the other thing that you will feel is you will have morning tiredness also you won't feel like uh, doing anything in the morning so it goes hand in hand with something which is known as chronic fatigue syndrome so you will be always fatigued if you have bruxism because the entire night when you were sleeping there is a phase in sleep which is called as rme sleep rapid eye movement sleep in the in, in that phase where we dream so this is called as the rme disorders rapid eye movement disorders so in that what the person who is very stressed out what they do is they grind their teeth they they clench it very hard and they grind it this can be triggered by something which is called as an impacted tooth if you have a third molar which is impacted the wisdom tooth which are impacted and now why the wisdom tooth are impacted we have to talk about that also so you know most of us we don't have 32 te- teeth in our in our mouth and uh, if you see the literature they say that it, it's an evolutionary disorder it is not it is a developmental disorder which is very much environmental so what we are eating and how we are taking care of ourselves there is something seriously wrong with that that's why we don't have our third molars which are erupted in the position where they supposed to be and erupted upright they are always slanting and they are putting undue pressure on the rest of the teeth so there are two things in this one is that you are bruxing at night like you are grinding very hard onto your teeth at night the other thing is there can be third wisdom to which 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 are there so that need to be taken care of fourth thing is the bad breath now bad breath is uh, oh, when you, you are saying to be taken care of how uh, 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 what do you really mean how do we take care of it you know so in this in, in this there are two three ayurvedic practices and pranayam that really helps one is postural exercises so if you keep your posture right and do certain asanas to make your posture right that really helps in bruxism the other thing is if you do pranayam so if you do pranayam you sleep better you breathe in better 
you have more of nitrous oxide in your system so that also helps in uh, bruxism you get less stress trouble and there is another thing which is in uh, ayurved which i want to stress upon is an adaptogen called as ashwagandha ashwagandha also works really well in this so if you have sleep disorder and you feel like like i am very troubled sleeper so i personally take ashwagandha every night before sleeping so it it makes me sleep like a baby it's it it's it really works well and there are other things also which are not very uh, medical but they are not um, ayurvedic also so there is an extract from the green tea it's called as l theanine there is something which is called as l tyrosine those also work but ashwagandha works really well uh, i want to share here uh, my yeah. granddaughter when she was 4 years old yeah uh, now she is uh, going to be 9 or 10 and uh, yeah. she had that uh, uh, teeth grinding with us a yeah. small kid and that uh, is physiological pardon that is physiological so that there are in kids there are two main reasons for grinding teeth one if they are uh, so basically it's for the stress only so it's rem behavioral disorder it's because of stress only the stress can be of basically of two main reasons one is if they have they are doing teething so there may, will be a mixed dentition some teeth are permanent some are milk teeth so teeth are falling off so at that time they grind more the second thing is in kids when they grind the teeth they there can be an uh, uh, like an parasitic in- infection also in the system like they can have round worm or tape forms or things like that so that need to be taken care of yeah actually that's what we did Uh, we yeah. gave her a deworming medicine and yeah. also we used to give her uh, i used my uh, little knowledge and what you said uh, mm. half a piece two spoon just of ashwagandha right yeah. and yeah. Both deworming with ashwagandha works really well worked. it yeah. really worked well in the small child okay yes yeah. so, so you can give them pumpkin seeds also those also yes. work really well pumpkin seeds right. also is, is a very good anti helminthic Ah, lovely! I didn't know about this. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and next, we come to bad breath. So, if you see bad breath, how we we already spoke about breath, bad breath a little bit. So, bad breath, eighty five percent of the times it's from a dental origin, and fifteen percent of the time it's from an extra oral origin, which can be nose or your throat, or from the from from your digest because of the digestive issues. Mm-hmm. So, bad breath. if you have morning bad breath that is fine that is normal and if you have a bad breath after eating something which is uh, which has a high sulfur content that is also fine like an uh, garlic or an onion that is fine but if you have bad breath otherwise also and it is so much that it's almost offending then you need to take care of it there can be a dental issue uh, as uh, associated with bad breath and most of the time it's it is dental so for bad breath ideally you shouldn't uh, take care of try and take care of it with home remedies you should go see a dentist because bad breath by the time you get a bad breath and it by the time it becomes offensive it's uh, it 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 uh, signifies that there is a little advanced progression of a disease could be a gum disease or a pocket or a periodontal disease uh, so it the dentist need to see it. there is a physiological reason for bad breath also which which i have missed out if you are hungry or if you are on ketosis then you might have something which is mm-hmm. called as acetone breath the diabetics also have the same similar breath so that is normal so you sh- if you have that and if you know that you are hungry or on ketosis or you are diabetic please don't use the mouthwashes which have mur- uh, which has alcohol in it so avoid those alcohol having uh, mouthwashes Yeah, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, yeah. I'll just make one point before we move on, yeah. Doctor Singh. The loose, shaky teeth, which you mentioned, it's so important yeah. because um, it, it it directly relates to our chewing, and yeah. we need to count our bites more than we count our calories um, as we are eating because that the chewing in in is indirectly related also to our digestive health. Yes. We might be yes. on the best diet. but if yeah. we are not chewing our food we have this micronutrient deficiency we have other pro- health related problems from not yeah. chewing and captain yeah. has taught us a beautiful practice of uh, eating in silence 
and uh, looking at your food and eating. So thank you for that. I just yes. wanted to. Yeah, so what happens when many chew your food, the food is broken down into something which is known as chine or kind, however you want to pronounce it. So it increases surface area of the food. So more nutrient will be absorbed. When, when the food is broken down, the more nutrient will be absorbed. But the thing is, you cannot, you have to give it time. You have to practice something which is known as mindful eating. You, and we are designed, if you, there are some researches on it. If, if you see it, we are not designed to chew our food for a very long period of time. We are not ruminants. So we, there is a sweet spot between too much chewing and too little chewing. So we should chew about 15, maybe 10 to 15 bites. Uh, when, when, we, when we chew, 10 to 15 times we, have, we should chew on, on onto the food. And uh, 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 before we move on, uh, there's yeah. another thing uh, which I remember uh, uh, the the uh, animals have a oh. habit of cutting, you know. Huh? Yeah, cut chewing. Right, right. And uh, yeah. human beings just swallow it most of the time. Yeah. They are in yeah. hurry, they are in anxiety, yeah. or uh, yeah. food is the last priority, how to have it. Yeah. Though yeah. they are working 24 hours for the food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why is that nature... Um, uh, uh, differentiating between animals and men. So there is there is a basic difference between the ruminants. So the animal which chew the cud is called as the ruminants. So those are not monogastric animals. Those are not the animals with one chamber in their stomach. So we are monogastric. We are more closer to a dog than a cow. Getting a point. So cow has four chambers in the, in their in this uh, stomach. And they have a they have a huge intestine where they ferment everything what they were whatever they eat. So that's why when they eat it, they have to break it down furthermore. So they can they are the kind of organism which can break down cellulose into proteins. We cannot do that. So our eating habit is completely different. If you see a bird, it doesn't chew; it swallows the entire thing straight right up. But they digest it. They digest it. They have a system where the gastric acid are very strong and they can digest it. So if you if you go into the nuance of it, so our gastric acid is somewhere close to a dog, and uh, it's our stomach is extremely acidic. So if if you see our ancestral food, we are supposed to eat fast and run. But as we evolved, our food also evolved. And we are having a lot of processed food. So now we have to chew it more, break it down more, and eat less, and uh, <laughs> yeah, give it time to digest, you know? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so the yeah, remedies. so the remedies, you know, so the remedies for what we can do for each one of those uh, things that, that I mentioned. So let me just come to the remedies. So, so if you have a bleeding gum, so what you need, what you can do is, or you have loose tooth, or you have dull growling pain, or you you have bad breath. For all, you can use this oil pulling. Now, oil pulling is something uh, which is in Ayurveda, which I have a lot of respect for. It is a beautiful practice, and it uh, it's 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 not just for your oral health; it's for your general health also. So the first, the, uh, the benefits of oil pulling, I cannot summarize in, in uh, five minutes or 10 minutes. It will, it will take very long to summarize it. So in, in short, what I can tell you is, first of all, it's a very good preventive measure to prevent all dental diseases like dental caries and gum disease and periodontal disease. You will not have all those if you do regularly oil pulling. The other thing with oil pulling is it increases the probiotes in the mouth, the probacteria in the mouth. And it washes away all the pathogenic bacteria without causing any harm to the oral mucosa and oral environment. It works in symbiosis with our system. And it's very easy to use. Like it's if you make a morning routine of using an oil pulling, it's very easy to use. So what you do is, it's the first thing you, you 
when you use oil pulling, oil pulling should be done first thing in the morning. You take five to ten ml of oil in the mouth, swish it around for fifteen minutes, and then just spit it off. And then you can rinse your mouth with warm water and then brush your teeth. So it's as simple as that. And maximum ninety percent of your diseases diseases will be taken care of. I made my own blend of oil pulling. It's called as Amoris. So someone helped me with it. My, one of my very close friend helped me with with making this uh, thing. So it it it's a coconut oil based um, uh, oil pulling blend, and it has something which is called as xylitol also. So xylitol is very anti caries. So it doesn't let uh, the teeth to decay. And even if you have a smaller decay. Xylitol helps in recalcification, and it can be used by anyone. The only thing that you need to take care when you're using an oil pulling blend like this, which has xylitol, you need to keep it away from your cats and dogs. It's little. Uh, the xylitol thing is not very well handled by them. Uh, where is this xylitol? Uh, is it part of the coconut oil, or it's a no, separate no, no. Uh, no, thing separate. you have to mix with it? Mm, yeah, so it's a separate thing. So xylitol is a sugar alcohol. so it is formed by a kind of fungus which grows on birch wood or hardwood so our body also produces xylitol but in small quantities it's sweet in taste and it's a sugar alcohol it's an uh, it's a natural ingredient it's not something which is lab made we see it a lot in chewing gums yeah you uh, see it a lot in chewing so because uh, it there are two reasons why they put it in chewing gum one it neutralizes the acid content in in the mouth the other thing that xylitol does is it uh, kills all the the harmful bacteria the beneficial bacteria doesn't uh, it doesn't um, do anything to the beneficial the harmful bacteria they bite on they eat on to the xylitol they it goes into their metabolism it doesn't produce any kind of calories and they die off so it's an and you can eat it i eat xylitol every now and then. so it tastes like sugar it's it's completely fine it's completely safe and you said it is something for remineralization so like all yeah. the so remineralization is see it's an uh, so um, we are... where we use where, where there is something which is called as incipient caries so when there is a uh, dental cavity when it's at the very initial stage if you use it it will not progress into a big cavity mm you're getting my point so yeah. remember yeah so incipient caries are just when the enamel has started becoming opaque in uh, in in color so if so you see a tooth so if you see, see it properly you see see it uh, in the mirror that it's the there there's a top layer which is very translucent there is a light that passes through it it's almost like a glass so that is enamel so if there is a patch on the enamel which is opaque which you see which is opaque that means There is an incipient caries or incipient decay on it. Mm. Yeah. So if you have something like that and you do oil pulling, you don't need to do, go to the dentist. It it will sort it out. For it's a very tall tool. I'm making it. Doctor Singh, for adults, we can do it. Is there is this recommended for children? Like yeah. How to do anyone who is like, if you ask me, anyone above the age of three is fine. Okay. Even if they drink, drink it in one or two occasion, it's fine. It's not going to do any harm. When, when do you get this? Uh, when do you get xylitol with the chemist? Yeah, xylitol. You, it's it's very readily available. It you can get it in the chemist. Uh, it's in liquid form, correct? It's in it's in powder form. You can get it in liquid form also. No. So what do you do if you get it in powder or liquid form? You make it a liquid and then uh, uh, do gargles with it uh, for some time. What do you do? No, no, no. Then we no not like that. So we mix it with oil. Yeah, acha. You we mix, mix it, it with the coconut oil. We may mix it with coconut oil. So we get the best of two worlds. You ah. getting the point? Yeah. So yeah. coconut oil. How you said? How you said that oil help you with yes. the gum bleeding? So yeah. it will help with the gum bleeding also, and it help with the caries also. So wow. the thing with coconut oil is coconut oil is very high in uh, lauric yeah. acid. Yes. And it is. Uh, when you you do oil pulling when you keep the oil into the mouth for yes. 15 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes it's a part of it is absorbed into the system also i see so th- through the uh, uh, through the area under the tongue it's called a sublingual plexus so 
when you use the oil, you have to be a little cautious about the oil that you use because you cannot put anything in the mouth and keep it there in the mouth, thinking that it if I'll spit it out and come out. No, but a part of it will, will get absorbed into the system. So that's why I highly recommend to use a coconut oil. Correct. Coconut oil works. Yeah. 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 And uh, also a coconut oil which is used for cooking, not for mm-hmm. the air. Yeah. 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 Uh, one must remember that. So and one of my patients. Yeah, I was talking to her about oil pulling and she said that, yeah, I do oil pulling and I've read about it and it's an Ayurvedic practice. And she said that I do it with sunflower oil. So huh. when, when I talked to her and she showed me the literature also, but sunflower oil is something which was introduced in India in 1969. So, so it wasn't there in the Ayurvedic practice. Yeah. So this is something which... Uh, Sangeeta ji, please mute. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah. Yeah, so the, there is another thing. This is curcumin, which is also in Ayurveda, which is huge. And I'm a big, big fan of it. Oh. Anyone I see, anyone I see the first thing I ask them what is, what's your name? The second thing I'll ask them is, do you like having haldi? So it's it's so huge in my life. So uh, curcumin is, there are double blind studies where they have used curcumin, haldi, in, uh, in, in as an adjuvant to a painkiller and a substitute also. That means what? A painkiller has been given to someone along with curcumin, along with haldi. So haldi does what? It potentiates the action of painkiller. So like it will make the painkiller work even better. And it is being used as a substitute also. Without the painkiller also, if you just give haldi, it acts as a painkiller. So if someone has a bleeding gum and he, he or she doesn't have an immediate access to a dentist or cannot go and get a dental consult, they can do what? They can put some coconut oil that can mix with haldi and they can massage it on their gums. Like how what you did, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can, they can massage it on the gums and then it, they'll see a result in maybe two days. It's so good. Absolutely. The other thing it does, yeah, the other thing it does is um, it reduces inflammation. We are all very inflamed because we have a lot of inflammatory diet. So the diet that we eat has a lot, it creates a lot of inflammation in our system. We eat a lot of omega-6. We eat, eat a lot of um, seed oils. We eat a lot of sugars. We eat way too much of carbohydrate. So all those things increases inflammation in our system. So if you have something like curcumin on a regular basis, it keeps an inflammation at check. So it's always a good idea to drink. Yeah. Dr. Singh, if it's included in our diet, is that sufficient or do we need to actually use it in oral care? Like, you know, put in, mix it in oil and put it on your teeth. Or if you're just having it in your food. How, how much you're having it in your food and what's the content of curcumin is... is so there are little... Uh, there are some details to it. So, um, according to the literature, if you're having 500 milligram of curcumin, so uh, and uh, you're using it with something which is oil based, so it, it, that's fine. That's enough. You don't need to additionally add on to it. The other thing with haldi is you are not supposed to have it with something which is water soluble. Like people do have it with tea and all that, which is which is water. Haldi has a lot of oxalates in it. It might counteract. It might not help you, and it might be harmful also if you take it with water. So, are, are, um, uh, in olden days, people people used to have it with milk. There was a reason why they used to have it with milk, because it's fat soluble. And the other thing that you can do to potentiate the action of curcumin is put little pepper into it. Cayenne pepper or your normal black pepper. It increases its absorption. In some studies, it says it increases its absorption to in one-tenth of the ratio if you use it, it increases its absorption to six times. So it makes it really good. If you can have just the plain curcumin supplement, that's also good. Then they uh, filter out the, all the oxalate part of the haldi. So it, it makes it even better. Yeah? Now there's, uh, I mentioned before all the adaptogens. So there are different adaptogens, like there is reishi mushroom, there is ashwagandha, there is ginseng. But Ashwagandha is very Indian, very uh, Ayurvedic and very relevant to this topic. So I, 
so yeah and and i'm a big fan of it I, so what are adaptogens adaptogens are the the things which adapt um, to a deficiency to a deficiency that your body already has like if you are deficit to certain kind of an neurotransmitters the adaptogen will work on that that means it has multiple actions it is not just working on one mechanism it it works on different mechanisms so ashwagandha as far as i know it works really well for sleep if someone who has bruxism like someone who is night grinding and who has morning headaches they i highly recommend them to take ashwagandha before sleeping it it really works well and it uh, it's a very good stress reliever also if someone who has to do night shifts or someone who is sitting in front of the screen throughout the day i i i highly recommend them to have ashwagandha in the day now this is tongue scraping i didn't know about it <laughs> till till a couple of years like 7 8 years maybe 5 years back and tongue scraping is also a uh, very good practice that you can add on to your uh, oral hygiene uh, practices like tongue scraping is more to reduce the bacterial uh, residue and the bacterial food that is there on on your oral environment rather than reducing the bacteria and if someone suffer from malodor i highly recommend them to do tongue, tongue scraping if they don't have a tongue scraper they can use brush but you are supposed to clean your tongue all the way back so there at the back there is something which is known as circumvallate papillae so if you see at the back of your tongue there will be some elevations which looks very rough and very elevated if you see it in the mirror don't get freaked out those are uh, those are normal structures of the tongue so you have to clean your tongue all the way till there and most of the uh, um, uh, odor causing bacteria reside at the back of the tongue so you need to clean the tongue all the way till the back tongue scrapers are works better than tongue than brush but having said that if you don't have a tongue scraper you can use your uh, brush also uh, you are absolutely right tongue scrapers or tongue clean gb jisko gb bolte hain hindi ke andar gb ha you uh, won't believe it uh, uh, gb is part of our heritage you know the gb that yeah. i am using has been yeah. passed on to me by my great great grandfather it's almost uh, uh, made of silver but uh, more than 100 years old oh wow <laughs> so wow. He, i mean what i'm saying is ki this practice was prevalent among our forefathers yeah so yeah they might you know, be captain, some... you know captain surprisingly Uh, america got the first tongue cleaner in 1994 i was reading so we yeah. in the indian practice has been way long yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes yes absolutely so uh, uh, this is also very important so when uh, people talk about malocclusion like crooked teeth they talk about impacted tooth they talk about mouth breathing uh, they talk talk about bad oral hygiene that has a lot to do with sunshine so if your if if a woman is exposed to sun um, when she is uh, expecting a child the child tend to have better dentition it sounds pretty strange but yes it that's true and if um, a, a child who a growing child if he is exposed to the entire spectrum of sunlight the entire spectrum i mean from vibgur from ultraviolet to uh infrared if they are exposed to the entire thing it uh, it it potentiate in their development also it helps with the skeletal development also it does a lot like there is no end to what sun uh, shine can do what we know about sunshine is very little we know that okay sun uh, we we need to go out in the sun because of the vitamin d that it uh, form but we are little hesitant because it you might get sunburn and there can be skin damage that that is happening to because we are out there in the sun if you are having skin damage and if you are if you are out there in the sun there is something wrong with the nutrition yeah so what people think that sun does like there there are people there is growing awareness among the people and they think that vitamin d is sun produces vitamin d because with sunshine we produce vitamin d but what it actually does is all that in the list that i have given it does all that. it promotes atp production it 
increases antioxidant in the body it releases melatonin so now melatonin is a natural hormone that is produced in the body which promotes sleep which promotes well being which promotes uh, critical thinking so if someone is not producing enough of melatonin they are more likely to do wrong decisions they are more likely to uh, not sleep well they are more likely to brux they are more likely to grind their teeth at night they are more likely to sleep poorly also serotonin again is a feel good hormone which breaks down into different hormones and uh, makes a person feel good about themselves dopamine is always it's it's dopamine is also talked about a lot so dopamine helps there is one thing about do, dopamine which no one talks about it's is it helps with dexterity dexterity is what when you use your hands and fingers and your hand to eye coordination that is called as dexterity dopamine helps with that a lot so if someone who is an athlete who wants to have very good hand eye coordination or someone who is working on a laptop or someone who is wants to type really fast or someone who is a musician wants to play a musical instrument and want to play play it really well they need to have a good quality and lot of dopamine in the system that they can get with very good sunlight they don't need to eat anything they just just need sunlight yeah so wow it's amazing yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know about it. <laughs> yeah. So when we talk about teeth, people say that don't eat hard stuff. Your teeth will go bad. Your uh, your teeth are not supposed to handle hard stuff and this and that. But the, in reality, if you use your teeth properly with proper nutrients, like for non-vegetarians, it's there are bones and meat and snow and cartilage and all that they can eat but for vegetarians the, the the things that are shown in the pictures like nuts and seeds and uh, chanas and uh, ganna those are the things that should be given to a child a growing child where they can form their jaw and the jaw muscles there are two main muscles which are very important in growth and development of the face one is called as temporalis the muscle that is a fan shaped muscle which is on the side of the head the other is called as a masseter which is on the side of the jaw so if a if a child eats on to something which are, which is very hard and he chews on to that then they, that those muscles develop the muscle forms the skeletal structure around it so there is a saying which is used in in engineering also architecture also and in dentistry also it's called as form follows function like if you give something some kind of a function it will follow a form and 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 if you make the muscle strong they will make the jaw strong and they will make the dentition strong so when a child is growing up you should make them smoothies and uh, smoothie bowls and give them cereals and all that no give them hard food to eat so they can use their jaw they can use their teeth and in in long run they will not have crooked teeth one they will not have impacted tooth the wisdom tooth that are lying down and that that are not erupted properly to there are lesser chance of them having bruxism in the later age this is very interesting because almost the entire infant and toddler food industry is based on pulverizing the food and giving yeah, them yeah yeah and making them mush yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that's the, that's the worst that's the worst thing for the teeth like something that stick on to your teeth and which is have which has lot of sugar and high carbohydrate in it so that forms a micro environment which which uh, anything which is a fermentable uh, fermentable sugar is not good for your uh, teeth okay great so yeah so this is this is this is my information if you want anything else other than this you know it's uh, uh, you been absolutely amazing uh, though yeah. of course uh, friends we have uh, crossed another 15 minutes but yeah. uh, with the permission of the audience and the participants here uh, can we yeah. take another 10 minutes and permission of the dr shobraj uh, yeah. have question answer session is it okay yes yeah so if you are all audience ready give us a thumbs up you are ready for another 10 minutes yeah. Yeah. thank you uh, shama gandhi is asking <laughs> what is the proportion of coconut oil with uh, xylitol i think it's a i think it's a proprietary blend that blend, yes. so so it, it's, it's, yeah so it's a blend so i cannot disclose the proportion 
no no uh, see you said no take a xylitol powder and mix it with the coconut oil so how much no, powder that, no that is my proprietary blend huh? so that's your that's your that is it's not something that can anybody can blend at home it's not a home you have to it's something that he recommends yeah, that, that ingredient in any blend that anybody buys that should be there yeah no i didn't get it so 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 xylitol is not mixable with coconut oil so we knew use a special technique to mix it i see acha it's not a yeah. common thing no, no, can't no, no it's not no it's not fat soluble Okay, it's, it's water soluble. Yeah, it's not water soluble. No, no, it's fat soluble. Correct. So you mix it with the coconut oil, no? No. No, water. it's not. It's not. It's water soluble. Sorry, it's not fat soluble. So Correct. it doesn't mix with. Yeah, yeah. I see. So it doesn't, doesn't mix with coconut oil. Yeah. So we mix it. We have a special technique of doing it. It okay. cannot be done at home. Yeah. Uh, we cannot. We may not be able to buy a blend in the U.S., Doctor Singh. So if we yeah, want to, you use can use you can use plain coconut oil. Okay. You 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 don't need to buy the blend. You can use plain coconut oil. Just make sure that it's cold pressed. That's and, uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. And extra virgin, of course. Yes. Extra virgin cold yes. pressed. Virgin. Cold pressed. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. 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 One of the questions from Jaya, Doctor Singh, is: Is morning sunlight better or evening sunlight? Both, both are better. So, in the morning and the evening, you get something which is known as infrared. So, while the sun is rising and one while the sun is setting. So, if you see it, if you go by the beach, you see that sun seems red when it's in the evening, and even in the morning it seems red. Have you noticed that? That's that's because of the infrared. so infrared causes more of uh, mitochondrial activation so morning sunlight and evening sunlight both are very good during the day it's little uh, tricky so because if you are in the tropics it can you can have certain sun damages so but the best way to do a sunbathing is lay on your back our back has lot of sun receptors so yeah, yeah. kavya i think your question was answered in the session about which oil is better sesame or coconut I coconut oil coconut yeah. oil would be that and how yeah. often should somebody do oil pulling is it recommended once in a day once a day okay yeah first thing um, in the morning um, every day or uh, maybe for a week you do and then stop for once in a uh, once for a week in a month or something or every day no no, no you can do it every day there is no no hard there is no limit so people people with mpds let me give one disclaimer people yeah. with myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome or people with uh, tmd disorder temporomandibular disorder they should do it in the evening mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't know what this means but somebody is uh, uh, simran is asking how to avoid teeth plug 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 yeah plug is you there are so many aids brushing is one of them brushing flossing and oil pulling okay so uh, it the sequence goes like that in the morning you you do oil pulling then you brush your teeth and then you floss okay we have not should a time gap between brushing and oil pulling sorry time gap time gap between, so you can brush immediately after oil pulling so there is not much of change in the ph like when you eat food and you are not supposed to brush immediately after that so because the the ph drops drastically and your oral environment becomes little acidic so if you brush immediately after eating that can erode your enamel so but in cases of oil pulling you can brush immediately after it. you do oil pulling so rinse your mouth with warm water and then brush immediately okay. i have a question from padmini what are your thoughts on chewing gum my teenager seems to be doing it often especially while doing homework i usually try to buy him gum with xylitol that's fine once in a day it's fine how many pellets of xylitol they have it's it, it depends on that they should limit it to 3 three. three gums a day yeah yeah for for crest which they get in the us yeah. it's called as crest yeah. for crest yeah. it's 3 three, three. Okay. not more than that and keep it away from the dogs or cats or any also pets they have 
Okay. Um, Deepika has a question. She had her silver fillings done in her teeth almost 20 years ago. She feels her teeth are fine, but what can she do now about it? So she can do something which is known as safe removal of mercury, safe, safe amalgam removal. So there, there are some biological dentists there in, where is she? She's in India. She's in India? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Amazing Bombay only, sir. Yeah. So, so yeah, so there is a way of removing it. It's called as a safe removal of mercury. So okay. where the dentist will put a rubber dam in the mouth and they'll give them oxygen so that they shouldn't, nothing should fall into the mouth and they shouldn't inhale anything, any of the vapors. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then it, it, it can be, it, it need to be removed and uh, it need to be filled with uh, uh, more biocompatible material like composite or a ceramic. Okay. Because mercury, mercury is not okay. It's okay. not good. If, if I get it removed now, I'm in my mid-30s. So will this uh, weaken my tooth more and what 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 the effect will happen? So I, I need to see the teeth. If they have a, like a huge feeling and if there is a crack, then you might need to get an onlay or something. But for sure, it will not get weakened. Uh, no, no, my teeth are doing fine. I, I got a pretty smile. That's why. <laughs> yeah. So, no, but the thing yeah. with, uh, the thing with uh, mercury filling is... Yeah. 50% of it is mercury. So if you want to read about it, you can read about, read a, uh, there's a research called a smoking tooth. You can okay. read that research. Yeah. So it, those are not fine. You shouldn't mm. be keeping them in, in your system. There's a limit to every toxic material that you put into your system. It's called as a novel limit. For mercury, it's, it's zero. Means any quantity of mercury that goes into your system will have some kind of a detrimental effect in your system. Okay. Yeah. So you need to get them removed. Oh. I'm not trying to scare you off, but yeah. Yeah, no, no not a problem. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. The thing, we have yeah. a question from Pravesh Ji. What type of flossing is better, water or thread flossing? Thread flossing is always better. The thread floss, which looks like a thread, it's always better, but it needs more of dexterity and coordination. Uh, what is the I'm, water flossing? Yeah, I'm told nowadays you have a, a toothbrush with the water jets and things like that. Can you tell yeah, us something so, in, uh, in this question? Yes. Yeah. So if, if you have uh, crowns and if you have bridges, then that water floss really well, works well. So if you have a water floss and if you have crowns and bridges, so then you can use that water floss because you cannot floss between the bridge, between the two things. So water jet or a water floss, there is something which is called an air flosser from a company called as Philips that works really well. You can use that. Uh, uh, one second, let me mute all because uh, there's some place somebody's music is on. So you are now unmute and uh, please, uh, Kalindi and uh, doctor, please unmute and then talk. Uh, one uh, question I had, Dr. Singh, is in the pandemic, we learned we should yeah. wash our hands at least two minutes. You also spoke that we shouldn't chew our food for more than 10, 15 times. For brushing our teeth, is there a time amount, like 90 yeah. seconds? Less than three minutes. Less than three minutes on, on an average. And the best way of brushing is called as modified bath technique. So if you don't know what it is, and uh, you can look it up on the net. So um, I tell you in, in a layman term, you what you can what do that is, is yeah. uh, modified, you explain what that is? Modified bass technique, B-A-A-S-S, modified bass technique. So when you brush your teeth, don't do scrubbing. Use your wrist to brush. And put your brush at a 45 degree angle from your gums to the, to the teeth. And you brush it from top to down, from top to down. And then you can do a little circular motion. That's it. Yeah. And when you brush, Try and touch it with your tongue all over because your tongue has a lot of proprioception. And wherever there is plaque, you will get to know about it and you can brush in that area. Uh, I want to add here, uh, yeah. uh, my grandfather, father, they, what they shared with me is you brush your teeth absolutely uh, the same way. He, he said only use your wrist. Yeah. Uh, but after brushing for about two minutes or so, use your finger to massage your gums. And yeah. massaging gums is a very important thing, which I have been doing since my childhood. Not yeah. only the outside gum, open the mouth and put your thumb inside. and massage inside. And I also want to share one more tip or a trick uh, about 
below your upper gum the last yes. part there is a kind of a mole over there on both the side left and right a slight yeah. kind of a projection yeah that projection is corrected directly to your sinuses and uh, okay and i have number of patients who sinuses i have been able to cure by massaging that uh, molar uh, that kind of a thing by just uh, while you are massaging your gum press that little bit uh, five yeah. to six times and your sinus would be gone in next two days yes yeah. so the the thing with properly formed dentition is if you don't have a properly formed dentition if your teeth are crooked and they are malaligned uh-huh. you might there is a reason uh, why our dentition should be in a u shape yeah. so and it 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 should form an arch because if you the dentition is directly related to your sinuses if you don't have a proper arch your sinuses will be collapsed it will be smaller in size and sinuses are very important for good breathing yes so there are bacteria there in the sinus which which helps with the general well being also yeah right um doctor sing one question is will curcumin stain the teeth no it does not okay it doesn't stain the teeth i guess it's it's a it's it's a logical question because it stains our clothes and other things but it will not stain yeah yes yeah. absolutely so I if you have a really dirty teeth if yeah. you have a lot of biofilm then it might look yellow so it's a very good disclosing agent so some we use in something called as disclosing agent in dentistry so there is something which is called a methylene blue so we put it in the mouth so it it covers out all the plaque that is there in the mouth so if you have really dirty teeth then it will it will it will show yellow and but you need to clean it on onto that area it will not stick onto the tooth it will stick onto the plaque wow oh, okay. Uh, okay there's also another superstition ki uh, if you eat uh, chew the tulsi leaves tulsi leaves uh, basil leaves yeah. Uh, yeah. it causes stain on the teeth does it no 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 it does not i i, I yeah. that's what i wanted to clarification yeah. no only basil in in fact it, it's it's an adaptogen so it's it's one of the thing that has yeah. an astringent effect better than alcohol and it works really well if in bleeding gums also But yes. coffee and tea, yeah. coffee yes. and tea stains your teeth yeah. more than. Yeah, so <laughs> coffee, coffee, the not the roasted bean coffees, but the instant coffee. Instant coffee stains your teeth more. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> I have a question from Ramya Dentist. Recommend electric toothbrushes. Does that align with angular brushing? And what are your thoughts on that? Yes, it does. So it you can you can have angular brushing with your. Uh, electric motorized or an automated toothbrush the thing with uh, that is what kind of toothbrush you using so now at present the best in class is sonic care from philips which is an ultrasonic brush so you can do angular brushing and whatever kind of brushing you feel like right. i think yeah. padmini's one question is uh, what is the amount measurement for the oil pulling is it 1 teaspoon of the oil that is enough tablespoon 1 tablespoon Montable and 10 ml is fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Doctor Singh, Or, I have one question. I'm from yes. uh, Malaysia. My name is Simran. Uh, yeah. My question is: uh, is if we have a, uh, I mean, uh, impacted tooth. Okay. Yeah. So do we need to put extract it if it doesn't give any problem to us? If if you have an impact, how do you know that you have an impact? You got I an mean, X-ray? like X-ray. Yeah, I have an X-ray yeah. where the wisdom to instead of bring it this way, yeah, it's bringing it. Yeah, it's slanted. It's slanted. Ah, so, yeah. by by definition, impacted means it has a will to grow but lost direction. So when it lost loses direction, it will push onto your front tooth, and you will have a dull pain. That's what we were talking about. You will have a dull pain in your mouth, which you will not know about that. It's because of the tooth. you will not be able to figure out that this is because of the tooth and if you have certain symptoms like a morning headache or a dull growling pain or pain in the neck then get them removed if you don't want to get it removed you can wait it out but it's not a very good advice to wait it out because i don't know how deep they are if they are pretty deep then you might need to get it removed because they have the tendency to form a cyst around it it's called as a dentigerous cyst so so it's it's always a good idea if you get them removed 
yeah so so remove it out so uh, it's there will be a small surgery that they do and they'll they'll remove the teeth out how old are you uh, is actually my mom is having that she has it was <laughs> yeah so is, if your mom yeah. if your mom if your mom is if your mom is having that issue she should she shouldn't let let it be now so if if it's in the young patient it's better to get it removed in a, in an older patient let it be Okay, if her age is around like fifty and above, yeah, so, so she can wait and watch. She, she doesn't wait. need to wait and wait and watch. So it doesn't need to remove. Okay. Wow! Wow! So what a sound advice! Pain. Yeah. What yeah. a sound advice! And uh, we know it's so, not simple. Open... It's our mother. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this one is also my mom. Mom's question: If uh, you have a gum bleeding, then uh. the impacted tooth. has to be extracted no gum bleeding is not related to impacted tooth but gum bleeding on that area is related to impacted tooth so how deep is the tooth it depends upon that if the tooth is the front tooth is like that and the tooth is coming out like that and there is a gap between the two and if you eat something and the food is getting lodged into that area and getting decayed then you need to get it removed because it will what it will do is it will cause an infection in that area it will decay this tooth and it will decay this tooth so it will cause lot of problems so it's better to get it removed if it's completely submerged and there is gum over it and it's not been seen in the mouth let it be don't remove it okay, okay. Uh, i think uh, gum we have bleeding. had that yeah sorry i want to add one more thing for gum yeah. bleeding go to the dentist get it clean get your teeth clean once absolutely do one more thing Yes. And Absolutely. doctor, you were telling yeah. about uh, haldi, right? For yeah. coconut, is oh, it yeah. uh, bad food for uh, breath? Bad breath as well. Yeah. So if it's coming from the gums, it's because of the gum region. So then you can use haldi and coconut oil, and you can uh, like like. How much to put it? How much to put it? So half a teaspoon, uh, teaspoon of haldi and one tablespoon of. Uh, coconut oil you make a paste out of it it's little arbitrary okay. i don't know the exact ratio but when you mix the two and if the it becomes a paste consistency you can apply it just take some and apply it you can put a little salt into it also if you have a malin pink salt you can put a little salt and you can do it okay, okay. thank you yeah. doctor you uh, uh, doctor uh, i think uh, you must say your uh, last words now uh, before <laughs> my last words it's mr the last question <laughs> so yeah it, it was nice being with you guys that's what i want to say that and uh, i hope i have i hope i have been some of some help i am saying um doctor yeah can you take up the last question who speaking yeah yeah rinna yeah. so i'm joining from udaipur yeah please yeah. turn on your video when you ask a question just a moment yeah actually the thing is that uh, i'm having slight pain sometimes i feel like my i see the teeth are shaking but whenever okay. i visit doctor they say that they all are they are in good condition but i feel like i have some pain or something is it just a misassumption or something so get one x ray done of the full mouth it's called as an opg or orthopentomogram you can write it down it's it's called as opg so get that x ray done o p g okay. and uh, yeah you have my email email it to me i'll see it and i'll tell you maybe there's an impacted tooth on that area okay so so that my because uh, the pain, yeah, uh, pain occurs in the morning or in the evening no only sometimes when i'm sitting i did and then i focus on it and i feel like it's pain you feel that there is something pain yeah and there is yeah. no tooth which is involved in that right no All okay. and, yeah, and when you you can eat and all with your teeth, there's no issue. There's no sensitivity. Don't know. Yeah, problem. it's all okay. So yeah, so get get one OPG done and show it to me. I'll tell you what. Ah, okay. with doctor's permission, we will share your email on the group. Okay, uh, that WhatsApp. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you. You're, you're welcome. I just want to say thank you so much, Doctor Singh. We've taken more time than we had allotted for this session. <laughs> and i think we were able to sink our teeth into so many holistic oral hygiene practices and yeah. uh, understand really how the mouth is the mirror 
to health and disease in our body. And uh, yeah. oral health is very, very much related to general health. I think we forget that. And we think nutritional deficiencies are because of proper foods that we are not eating, but it could also be because of not proper chewing or poor oral hygiene. And yeah. as one of our participants, Jaya, very nicely said, from gum to gut, we have talked yeah. about the connection. So thank you so much for your valuable time. I just want to remind everyone, we have a free nurturing sessions every morning, 6.30 a.m. India time. Captain Mehta leads us through guided meditations, knowledge sharing, and uh, we would love to invite you all to these sessions. So please join us whenever you can. And I'll allow Captain Mehta to close with a few comments. Oh, <laughs> I'm absolutely speechless how engaging this session was. And I can uh, feel <laughs> all those with bleeding gums to uh, oil pulling to uh, everything you have said it so beautifully. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Shobraj. Sure, yeah. yeah. So uh, the name Shobraj is very attractive. And <laughs> I'm sure the older generations must have heard of it. And if you haven't heard about uh, Shobraj, then better not hear about it. But this <laughs> Dr. Shobrat is a magician in our life. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. I'll, Thank you. I'll take a leave. Yeah, we'll keep in touch. Thank you so yeah. much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Goodbye to everyone. After we're still live on YouTube, we can turn the